What hit us? Small asteroid fragments. This morning. How big were those? Those were nothing. The size of basketballs and Volkswagens. This new one you're tracking, how big? It's the size of Texas, Mr. President. That doesn't sound good. From the 1998 blockbuster Armageddon, in the film, a massive asteroid is barreling toward Earth. Some brave astronauts are sent into space to plant explosives and blow up said asteroid before it can destroy our planet. It's Hollywood fantasy, but there are asteroids out there that could impact Earth and cause real damage. One of them is currently under close observation by NASA and the European European Space Agency. The name of that asteroid is 2024 YR4. Scientists say it has a 1.3 to 1.6% chance of hitting Earth in December of 2032. Richard Moisel is head of the European Space Agency's Planetary Defense Office, and he has been at the International Asteroid Warning Network meetings taking place this week in Vienna. Richard, hello. Hello, good morning, Matt. How big is this asteroid that that you have been paying close attention to? Uh, Our latest estimates are between 40 to 90 meters in diameter. And so if, if that thing were to hit us, what kind of damage would it do? Well, first of all, there's a 99.5% approximately chance of it flying by peacefully. I appreciate you saying that. (laughs) Exactly. So it's not very likely. And then if it hits Earth, uh, it's mostly likely to hit uh, somewhere in the ocean. Um, If it were to hit Earth in that size range, we would expect um, the likes of the 1908 uh, Tunguska event, which flattened 2,000 square kilometers of forest and uh, sent seismic waves throughout the area and was felt and registered uh, uh, hundreds of kilometers away, but luckily had no casualties. Uh, Another example of an asteroid in that size range uh, with a different composition. So Tunguska is, let's say, if you have a loose aggregate of stony material, which we call rubble pile. Um, But if you have a solid chunk of iron 50 meters across, it can create uh, features like the meteor or Barringer crater in Arizona, which is about a mile across. And so, I mean, it's a devastated area. I mentioned that you have been at these International Asteroid Warning Network meetings. What is the conversation about if, if it's not this one, but another one, what we need to be thinking about and, and how you start to pay attention to all of the other things that are that are out there in space. We do basically take constant surveillance of everything that we have. Uh, we don't only discover and uh, monitor asteroids. We, in this case, is the planet-wide planetary defense community, including every country on Earth almost. Uh, It's not just us at the European Space Agency. Um, But we monitor closely um, all the asteroids that are uh, accessible to observations. And then in three centers worldwide at NASA, at ESA, and uh, Space Dice in Italy, um, we calculate their orbits for 100 years into the future, including all kinds of potential futures. And if you realize that an asteroid has a non-zero, and by non-zero it's any number as small as you can imagine above zero, um, we call that asteroid a potential risk. And Mm. then we we list it publicly on our risk list. Currently, we have 1,700 of these objects, but they are usually the chances uh, one in a million or one in several thousands. So 1%, which is one in 100, and it's actually today at one in 62, um, is quite unusual. It's not a danger yet, but it's so unusual that we take a very close look at this one. In 2022, people might remember that NASA fired a rocket into an asteroid and was able to alter its trajectory. What did, what did you learn from that? Oh, the DART exp- uh, spacecraft yeah. and the event. That was a, for us, it was a historic milestone. Before, we were assuming that we understand how to influence the trajectory of an asteroid with a kinetic impact. That's what, what it's called when you slam a spacecraft into a space rock. Um, uh, but from that day on, we know that we can do it. And it was spectacular. Um, it uh, The effect was much more than we had predicted. I had predicted uh, that this was about to change potentially on the order of 10 minutes, the orbital uh, uh, period. It was three times as much and the dust cloud was phenomenal. So it was a spectacular bang into a new age of planetary defense. A planetary defense. I mean, that suggests that, because we're part of this community of space. And so there are things that are out there that have hit you know, planets before, have hit perhaps Earth before, um, that it, if it's not immediate, then it is inevitable at some point in time that something will hit us. 
That's correct. Over the centuries and millennia, uh, you integrate up all these little probabilities and they sum up little by little until they reach one for almost any kind of size of asteroid. And this is why we are doing uh, planetary defense efforts now, and we're doing it constantly. We're constantly developing better ways of looking at them, more efficient ways of calculating the trajectories. Uh, we learn about asteroids in the ways of science and how to counteract their, their impact chances and anything. So I see us in a good time, we are not under direct threat. We're not at immediate risk. This is not an alert. This is not a crisis situation. So it's the perfect time to prepare for the day that crisis comes. Might be in 100 years, might be in 1,000 years from now. We will take that good news. Richard Moisel, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Richard Moisel heads the Planetary Defense Office at the European Space Agency. So we started with kind of a worst case scenario. There are also some very positive stories coming out about asteroids. Thanks in part to samples from one named Bennu that is still out in space. Danielle Simkus is a scientist at NASA. She's Canadian. She's on the team examining the sample from this asteroid. She's in Washington, DC this morning. Danielle, good morning to you. Hey, good morning. Tell me about Bennu. Uh, so Bennu is um, a pretty special asteroid. Um, it's um, a rocky body, you know, floating around space um, that we actually kind of consider like a time capsule from the early solar system. Um, the chemistry of Bennu is thought to be representative of um, the chemistry of the, you know, very early stages of solar system formation. Um, and we think that um, well, actually, we're seeing now that um, Bennu contains organic matter. So it contains the um, prebiotic organic compounds that are required to form life. You're seeing it because there was a sample of this asteroid that was taken and brought back to Earth. That's correct. So this is um, NASA's first sample return mission to an asteroid. And um, my lab group at NASA Goddard is involved in analyzing these samples that were returned to Earth um, just last year. Dumb question. What does it look like? What does the sample look like? You know, it's, um, I, for me, um, I'm, you know, super excited to yeah, see yeah, yeah. the sample in person, but, but it's pretty um, unremarkable when you look at it. It's just very dark and dusty. Um, it's just, it's just black. <laughs> um, it's, it looks uninteresting, but um, once you actually obviously do the experiments, it's pretty exciting to see I, what's in that. I heard material. it. So, somebody described it as surprisingly salty in terms of like the, the, what is what is in the sample. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's right. So um, there, we just have been finding that it has some um, unusually high salts, and that's um, one of the uh, new findings from the kind of mineralogical um, aspect of this research. And um, you know, we're just trying to understand what that means about Bennu's history and whether um, that has any impact on the formation of these prebiotic organic compounds that we're interested in. Why is it that people are saying, and you've hinted to this, but why are people are saying that it might contain some of the building blocks of life? Well, you know, we, I should have said that, um, you know, we know that it contains the building blocks of life. Um, <laughs> when we were heading towards this asteroid, we were hoping that it did. Um, and then, you know, the, the excitement last week was the release of our paper that shows that, in fact, it does contain these building blocks of life. Um, you know, they're formed by non-biological reactions in space, so just by chemical reactions um, not involving life. But these molecules like amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, and nucleobases, which are the building blocks of DNA, we're, you know, we're finding these in the sample. We know they're not contamination, and um, we know that they could have a role in the formation of life. What do you hope to learn from from the 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 little bit of dust that you got from this asteroid <laughs> well actually there's a lot of work to be done still i mean we just obviously these are exciting results just to confirm that you know all the work that we've been doing over the years on meteorite samples um is valid you know this is exciting just to confirm that and see all these organic compounds but um there's a lot of work to be done and we're finding that Bennu you know, depending on the sample that you're looking at, it can actually look quite different. Um, so it's not necessarily a homogenous asteroid and different pieces might look 
different. So there's just like, there's a ton of material left to analyze. I think it's like 70% of the material is actually going to be saved for future generations, including um, scientists who are not even born yet. So um, I'm just excited to see, you know, how it differs sample to sample. And if we can get some information about these chemical reactions that are involved in forming these like really important compounds. I love how giddy you are about this. I mean, it, you, you are over the moon that you have your hands on this substance. In some ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, this is, um, I would say this is the highlight of my career so far for sure. And, um, I've been, you know, excited to work in the astrobiology analytical lab at, at Goddard for, you know, over a decade. It was always my ultimate goal. So I just, if I, if you told me that, you know, 10 plus years ago, um, if you told me that I would be working on Osiris Rex, I probably wouldn't have believed you. So it's just kind of exciting to actually celebrate that we have this data. It's fantastic. Danielle, thank you very much. Thank you. Danielle Simkus is a scientist at NASA studying as you heard, the building blocks of life that were detected on an asteroid that they took a sample from and brought back to Earth.